I was 12 years old when I first had that feeling of sheer maddening frustration over a piece of technology not remembering me. We had our Super Nintendo for a few years before Doomsday, and it was a Saturday like any other when I decided to spend a few hours glued to the TV, playing my new favorite game, Super Mario RPG. <laughs> I blew up the cartridge, as any good 90s kid would, popped in the system, and flipped it on. To my horror, my individual save data file with my name, my star count, my progress percentage was gone. It was wiped clean, and I could no longer time travel to the point where I left off. In the mind of 12-year-old Jamie, both my file and my soul were empty. <laughs> After spending hours in turmoil, debating who to blame, obviously landing on my little brother, and making him wait on me as my own personal butler for a while, I resolved to take a deep breath and begin anew I never fully trust my data to a machine again. <laughs> Playing video games growing up was the only way I knew how to feel like a superhero. And this experience was the foundation of my understanding of how technology and data management can make our lives easier and more efficient and make me feel like I have superpowers. The equivalent today, imagine turning on Netflix, having no idea what you've watched, where you were in that last episode, and offering no tailored recommendations for TV dramas featuring a strong female lead. <laughs> or, what if Amazon suffered amnesia? Didn't know what you had just purchased, what you were browsing on your phone, and all of those gremlins figurines that, I, that you took time to painstakingly <laughs> add to your wish list. Be a little frustrating, right? Personalization, it's only the beginning of our expectations, though. Over time, you've learned to master new technology innovation as your base understanding of interfaces grows. So for example, you've learned to tap an app to open it, you've learned to swipe commands on your tablet, and you've learned to use your voice to control Siri or Alexa. As technology seamlessly shape our surroundings while simultaneously remembering our preferences and behaviors, we begin to feel entitled not only to personalization, but also to these hyper-relevant experiences. And we've begun to feel a hell of a lot smarter, too. I mean, how could we not feel more intelligent? We have access to pretty much any information we need on demand at any time. In a way, we're seeing ourselves transform before our very eyes into superhuman versions of who we once knew, armed with our technological sidekicks that support our bionic brains. We've developed our own version of X-ray vision using augmented reality and our mobile phones. We have heightened hearing with the ability to translate languages in near real time using in-ear hearable devices. We are faster than a locomotive with the ability to summon pretty much anything on demand from food to transportation. And we are getting one step closer to self-healing using wearable devices to monitor our own biometrics. Do you feel your power? You should, because technology has grown to shape our lives in new and exciting ways we would not even have dreamed of even a decade ago. But at what cost? What are we paying to continually get stronger, to increase our superpowers? Because all these superpowers do come at a price, and that price is paid in data. Every day, corporations have myriad opportunities to collect and act on consumer data, and we expect them to do so with consent, integrity, and respect for our privacy. Research from the Harvard Business Review shows that consumers rarely know how their data is being collected, used, sold, and shared. And the Pew Internet reports that we have even less comfort with our data being sold among companies without our express consent. Yet. As we start to develop a taste for these superpowers, we start to make a few compromises. Other studies show that people are willing to trade their data if it is in exchange for tangible value. So things like improved security, cost reductions, promotions, or, you guessed it, personalized content and experiences. So this contrast brings a really important question to the forefront of our discussion today. And that is, what do you value more? Stronger superpowers or greater control of your data? Because the truth of the matter is, it is simply easier and more convenient to plead a little ignorance when it comes to our data use 
if in turn we're rewarded with some pretty impressive superpowers. I call the current home we're in the data swindle, wherein we are trading our data for superpowers that we think are a fair exchange, but really we just don't know the true value of our data yet. And the data swindle is our near future home too, as we continue to give up even more data in exchange for even better and more impressive superpowers brought about by artificial intelligence, computer vision, and machine learning. But the data swindle, it isn't our only potential future state because like any good superhero's journey, there are a lot of potential permutations and outcomes we can encounter along the way. When we're so willing to give up our data so freely, what is to stop someone from taking advantage? Theoretically, Corporations could continue to collect the same amount and type of data from you while simultaneously scaling back your superpowers. Or they could offer you a really primo feature, but only if you pay the price. In this dystopian future, known as the data wasteland, you can expect your limits to be tested and to feel cheated over and over again. Thankfully. It is out of periods of such great strife and episodes of Black Mirror that change is born and viva la revolution. In the next phase, we find ourselves in a data uprising. When we say enough is enough, we will no longer trade so much of our personal data in exchange for weak or unimpressive superpowers. In the data revolution phase, change will be brought on first by the few and then by the many because it will be incredibly hard for you to say no for you to cut those digital behaviors that have become your lifestyle, for you to close those accounts that really don't give you anything in return for your data, and most importantly, for you to seek out new companies and new interactions where you are in control. It is out of the data revolution phase that we recognize we have had the power all along and the market will listen. Bringing us to our fourth and final utopian phase that I call the data marketplace. We're not only are we beginning to rebuild our superpowers through these new interactions? But we are also paid for our data, for what it's actually worth by advertisers, product developers, corporate innovation teams, and more. This is made possible by new startups, new companies, new business models, and honestly just new data ethics standards that rise from the ashes in response to our retaking control of what is ours. Sounds pretty good, right? I told you, there were a lot of potential future outcomes we could find ourselves in. Some obviously better than others, but none are without their challenges along the way. But fear not, fellow superhumans, because there are things you can do today to prepare for the journey ahead and to regain a little bit of the control you might be feeling like you've already lost right now. The first thing you can do is revisit your value system. Now this means asking yourself not only what do I value most, but also how do data-driven interactions positively contribute to or detract from what I value and what I'm trying to achieve. Also ask yourself, what superpowers, if any, are you willing to give up in order to regain some of that control? <coughs> Secondly, we need to become better stewards of our data. Good data stewards understand what information is being collected about them, where, when, why, how, to what extent. They know what the going rate is for their data and how much they are actually paying for all of those free services, social networks, and apps. Being a good data steward, it takes a lot of time. You're going to have to go back and reread all of those user and privacy agreements that we all just blindly sign off on. And you might even have to cut that proverbial cord if a service, an account, an app, if their data standards do not align with your value system. And finally, just as when my trusty Super Nintendo betrayed me. Honestly, it could have been my little brother. The jury's still out, but the damage was done. But just as when that happened, take a deep breath and repeat, because you will have literally hundreds of opportunities every single day to get this right if you're feeling nervous right now. You, you really will. Because taking responsibility for our data is a never-ending process we'll undergo regardless of the future state we find ourselves in. And it's only once we recognize 
that our true power lies in controlling our data through thoughtful stewardship, that our superhuman strength will know no bounds. Thank you.